everybody, it's Jeff here once again with Entrepreneur Essentials here at T-Works. And I wanted to introduce you to my friend Ray Freer. Ray is probably one of the most knowledgeable people I know in the healthcare business, uh, both individual and group. He's gonna share with us some great ideas today. As always, right under Ray's feed over there is our subscription button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and you will get all the updates. If you like this, and you wanna share this with others, please, please, please share this out on your social networks and let's get the word out. So thank you, Ray. Thanks Appreciate for having you me. coming today. So what's the, what's the journey? How'd you get so, there? So I uh, grew up in Connecticut and graduated college with a uh, bachelor degree in electrical engineering and right. I worked for a company in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, okay. Schlumberger. Oh yeah. And then after there I started a, uh, went over to a startup here in Houston, Texas called Compaq. Mm -hmm. And I was at Compaq for probably nine, going on 10 years. Had the opportunity with Compaq to move up to Austin and manage some of the engineering they had going on. And so I, I came up here for that. And then after that I went to another company called 3Com. Okay. And I opened an office for them here in Austin and grew it to about nine, 10 people. Then when the dot, the dot com bubble kind of popped, they made me lay off everybody. And then the last person I had to lay off was yeah. myself <laughs> and close the office. And then after that, kind of a slow time for getting hired and I ended up doing mortgages. Mm -hmm. So I did okay. zero dollar refis. I'm not part of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> During that for about a year. And then I got called back by my friends at HP mm. to go do expat assignment in Taiwan. Oh, cool. I lived over in Taiwan for four years and worked on servers. So I did the low end high volume servers mm -hmm. for them. and. And I would bring up ODMs to meet compacts or HP, or I guess HP standards at that time. Mm -hmm. But we would do everything over there to all the design work, do the validation, and then ship it okay. to be finals assembled throughout the world. So then how did you get into healthcare from that? That's well, I decided to come back to Austin. My daughter was getting older and I was okay. working a, a Taiwan day and a half a US day. So we came back and during that time it was, it was a little slow. I had to figure out what to do with my health insurance and I ran across a broker that showed me kind of a unique way to do it in those days where you could stack a couple of policies together to make, make you whole with a high deductible plan. And that perked my interest. And then what happened is a buddy of mine from Compaq called me and said, hey, will you come do some high tech stuff? So I commuted to Norfolk, Virginia, <laughs> doing a high tech thing um, for about six months, six to eight months, and then left them. And, and then at that point I was like, well, I can sit around in Moper or, or try to do something else. So mm -hmm. I continued down the path I originally was going towards when I got called away. Okay. Commission is a challenge yes, in those is. days. So anybody considering a commission job, you got to have some reserves till mm -hmm. you build your book of business. Yeah. And You're either doing it as a side wiggle or you got to slowly build. And if you, if you get in a situation where you don't have the cash, you're going to be a desperate salesperson. And that, mm -hmm. I think that'll yeah. be the death of you. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got here. And I, I tried to partner with that guy originally mm -hmm. that I worked with and found out not all insurance agents are the same. Some are a little more shadier than others. He was probably more on the shady side than mm -hmm. I wanted to be. And so then I, I started my own RF insurance cool. counselors. You work with some micro businesses and larger businesses. What are some of the challenges that, that you see from the health insurance side with especially small business because that's our audience. So, so I think I think the challenge is what do you do for your insurance? Yeah, a lot of people decide to go without, and then mm -hmm. you hear sad stories there where, hey, can you share my GoFundMe link or something like that? It's, mm -hmm. it, you buy the insurance for the big stuff, and I try to ask people questions of what they're looking for. A lot of the plans that are individual plans today are all HMO or closed network mm -hmm. or EPO that's a closed network. Well, so if your doctor's not participating they struggle with how do I keep my doctor? Yeah. And a lot of times the doctors aren't flexible. My opinion is the doctors care about themselves. I find so many clients so loyal to their doctor and I'm yeah. going. And the doctor's not even remotely loyal to you. Yeah. Right, so, so I ask questions about that. What is their usage like? And then try to figure out is it, can you go down a path that you pay for what you use, kind of like a health savings account compatible plan, mm -hmm. which can give uh, an, a small business owner an, an opportunity to put money aside for medical, dental, and vision use and prescriptions and they pay a little higher out of pocket. They don't have fixed co-pays to say, but it sometimes based on their usage model, that may be perfect for them and give them some tax benefit. The other side of it is if they have expensive prescriptions or they're looking for um, co-pays for everything. And sometimes I see the spouses don't agree on what they want. So mm -hmm. 
today it doesn't make any difference if you do one or two plans. So yeah. sometimes putting somebody on two different plan designs makes a lot of sense. Somebody that's a higher user, you give them a better plan than somebody who doesn't go to the doctor. Yeah, you give and them it all lower. balances out in the and, end. And you yeah. end up sa saving on premium at the end of the day. But the biggest complaint I hear is I can't go to the doctors I want to go to. Mm. I don't have the flexibility. As long as you have some kind of certificate of business or filed with the state, mm -hmm. we can set up a, a group plan okay. and you can get a PPO again and mm -hmm. get back to where you have a, a wider network of doctors. And I say this year, Blue Cross, their group side has been pricing fairly aggressive. On the HMO side of Blue Cross's groups, they're actually lower than what individual plans are on, wow. on the marketplace. So I personally moved from an individual plan to a group for my business. Mm -hmm. I'm saving about 300 a month yeah. by doing that. That's a big deal. Yeah, Putting a group in is pretty easy. Uh, if we get all the documentation together, certificate of formation, tax and wage report if you're doing that, or Schedule K-1 or, or uh, Schedule C, we can show that you have income, state file proof of business you fill out some applications kind of set the policies for your company uh -huh. how long does it take for somebody to be eligible you set that 60 days 30 days zero days uh -huh. and you can make it whatever if you don't plan to hire anybody you can pick any number there just submit the paperwork and and usually in about three days huh. we have it issued and we can have temporary id cards to you so nice. it's not a hard process huh. and i think as a business owner you have some more flexibility mm -hmm. too so if you needed to do a plan change out of cycle okay. or switch companies you can do that anytime during the year so you're not gated by the annual enrollment period everybody yeah. likes to have a, a calendar year start which kills us as insurance yeah, agents well, but if you want to the 401k business <laughs> we're the same thing yeah and if you want to start in march that's fine mm -hmm. march is a good time to do plans yeah. and, and your deductible resets on the calendar year though mm -hmm. for most plans so just know that if you're planning surgery in the last quarter whatever you spend in the next year will will apply to the whatever new group plan you yeah. you go to so yeah. but i enjoy trying to help people figure that out and mm -hmm. and, and narrow down their choices it, you know there's a lot of the non-health insurance shared plans that are out there do you see that growing more i see that or, continuing yeah. to be a, a force out there i don't have personal experience with how do they handle claims if you uh -huh. have something big i think the little stuff you can get away with that as we get older uh -huh. our premiums go up i mean yeah. a 64 year old is paying three times as much as a 21 year old which so, should be that way yeah well but it but it, it yeah. it's can be you know seven eight hundred dollars a month and uh -huh. That's why those other plans come into play. And now the short-term plans are, are an option for somebody getting ready for Medicare uh -huh. as well. Is like, we can do that for 360 days. I just worry about the five days. Yeah, The five days are what scares me on that. And uh -huh. uh, being in the business long enough, you hear about things happen. You get yeah. breast cancer and then those you're in treatment for those last five days, yeah. then what happens? This is something we use here is we use a combination of health insurance and a direct primary care physician. Uh, you know, where you're, paying, on that side. Where, where you're paying a fee to the primary mm -hmm. care. I think that can work. I mean, it would be covered if you have a health plan. If your doctor accepted yeah. the insurance, it would be covered. But if you're on a high deductible plan. If you're on a high like deductible, that, I yeah. mean, uh, with, the, with the high deductible plans going to a doctor, the negotiated rate is between 70 and 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. So it's not out of line today. The, sure. And we keep seeing the co-pays go up. So the concierge doctors, I, I like the concept of it, but there's going to be a time where service for you is going to be in jeopardy, I think. Uh -huh. and, and then it's not counting towards your out-of-pocket. But I think with the high deductible health plan, you can use your health savings account uh -huh. to pay for those monthly fees without any problem. Yeah. So yeah. so you can use tax-free money for that. I'm just, uh -huh. for me, I'm not really an advocate of it. Sorry for those doctors out there that yeah, are doing no, it. It's, but but it, it just, it doesn't seem fair that you have that max out of pocket and then you're doing something outside just uh -huh. so you can have access to your doctor. Yeah. Depending yeah, exactly. on what you need, I think it, it's that personal preference. And, and uh -huh. I do have quite a few clients who are participating in yeah. that. All of us that are business owners, especially at the beginning, you're fighting for money so that you can get there. What are some other solutions outside the box of traditional healthcare for, let's say, a really early startup company? Well, the MediShares, like you mentioned, I think okay. are a viable option. Uh, if you're fairly healthy, you don't have anything going on. The short-term plans like United Healthcare has, you know, you can pick a $22,000 max out-of-pocket uh -huh. 
and be covered by that just for the big stuff if, yeah. if you want to risk that. But you know, it, it gives you a little bit more affordable. Uh, the mm -hmm. thing I don't like about that, it doesn't cover your annual wellness okay. or things like that. So that's a little bit of a carve out. And I think the health, mm -hmm. the MediShares may cover some of that. You'd have to look at the fine print in there. There's also pre-existing periods on mm -hmm. the MediShares of three to yeah, six months. Yeah, not depending. on the other plans, yeah. Yeah, so depending what your situation, you know, we can, we definitely help advise, mm -hmm. you know, if, it, if it's better for you to save money doing that, yeah. by all means do that. But I, I wouldn't go without. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, kind of go into our, our section of what's new in the world. There's a lot of stuff out there with legislation right now. There's court cases. Yeah, you know, all of that said, how is that going to change healthcare for 2019? 2019 is locked and loaded. So what's going to happen in my healthcare? You know what? There's going to be a long discussion in the legislature on how and if that will even be approved all the way through. Yeah. And then it takes time to go through Department of Insurance. Just because it's a law, mm -hmm. like when the Affordable Care Act was put in place, it took two years to implement. Sure. So we're going to see the dismantlement will take some time and we're going to have some warning signs mm -hmm. before that. I think we're going to have a hard time going back to underwriting. Mm -hmm. I just I think there may be some plans out there that they'll do underwriting on, but I, I don't think the vast majority of people in this com uh, country are going to accept. It's between both political parties, I think the pre-existing condition side of it, you know, it's pretty evident that, yeah, that's the one thing that everybody can agree on that they don't want to see go away. Yeah, and I, I would say before affordable care, Texas at least had the Texas risk pool, so you could get okay. coverage in our state. But if you lived in Georgia and you had a heart attack history or you had diabetes or you've had cancer, there was no insurance plan. Mm -hmm. So I understand why affordable care was trying to equalize every sure. state. In the process, you know, we've seen premiums double uh, yeah more double, than double triple. yeah <laughs> maybe there is some of the solutions could be in the future that you'll see medicare drop down mm -hmm. year by year it's a system that works i don't know implications for financing it but when we look at what's being paid out in subsidies you have to wonder where's all that money coming from mm -hmm. so you know if you had to guess where do you think the health care in our country is going i would imagine if they haven't started looking at Medicare, they should. Mm -hmm. But I, I think Medicare, where you can add, bolt on a Medicare Advantage type plan, mm -hmm. could solve solve the cost issue. Yeah. And if there's enough money to fund the Medicare program, you know, and just in five year increments, year mm -hmm. after year, you start increasing that population on Medicare. People don't like to hear that, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think it's a system that works. And maybe maybe you have traditional options and you have the Medicare option mm -hmm. for lower income. Okay, we can you know at least get people out. We of, should have yeah. the freedom to choose, and that that's yeah. the thing that we lost with affordable care. We lost our ability to keep our doctor. I think not having these all these completely <laughs> standardized plans where you know you have to have you know maternity coverage. Well, I'm male. I don't need maternity coverage. Why am I paying for that? Because you're helping your neighbor. Well, that's true. Uh, yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely easier today. The price you see is the price you're going to get. There's okay. not going to be the surprise. There's not going to be carve-outs like years ago. You'd get carve-outs. Oh, you've had back problems. We're not going to cover anything with hmm. back-related. So I think the world is better in that sense that we can get people what they need without having them yeah. worry about what's going on. Or, or without that late surprise that, oh, by the way, oh, they just found out you've got... We're not going to cover your knee replacement. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here's your premium. We're going to increase your premium too. Yeah. So so now we're paying a lot more, but I think from a service to people, I, I think the the medical plans are they have less wiggle room to mm -hmm. not cover stuff. All right. So fast five questions now. Oh, great. All right. You wake up in the morning. Business is totally gone. You have five hundred bucks in your pocket, laptop, computer, place to live food and drink, what do you do first? I would try to uh, find a BNI chapter to promote whatever business I'm gonna do. For me, that's helped my business drastically in getting connected in the community and getting in front of people wanting my product or service. Well, and, and having a sales force out there for you. So. Yeah, once they know you and, and trust you, then they can yeah. refer you. And for those that, that don't know, what, what is BNI? So uh, Business Networking International, it's an organization founded by Dr. Ivan Meisner. They've been around 34 years, going on 35, and it's a very structured environment that each member has an opportunity to speak about their business every week. They, they train you how to network. So coming from high tech, I knew nothing about networking. And BNI, I got into BNI about six months after I started my business. Taught me to 
sell in a different way, you know, mm -hmm. different than you would think you would sell, especially somebody who's new, you're very anxious to try and get some cash flow. You sell one policy, I was like 40 bucks, where are we going? Yeah. Where are we gonna go, uh, <laughs> where are we gonna go eat tonight? What's the biggest business mistake you've made? Uh, probably not joining BNI yeah. soon enough. <laughs> I would say probably I was trying to partner with, with somebody or work with mm -hmm. somebody that the more I got to see what he was doing, I found out it wasn't the right. So I misread somebody's personality. Uh -huh. I, I would say I learned and, and found true sources that you could learn from. Yeah. So just making sure you're partnering with somebody or talking to somebody who's gonna be straight and not tell you some story that's incorrect. What's a good book that you recommend for an entrepreneur? Dr. Ivan Meisner, the founder of BNI, uh, wrote Who's in Your Room? He just mm. did a new rev. Uh, you can find it on Amazon and download it. It's a good book to just talk about who, who you let in your life. You don't want to let a bunch of bad people in your life. They're going to bring you down. They're going to be negative influence. So you want to put people around you that are strong. Hang out with people you admire. Those will be the ones that are going to pull you up. What's a tool that you use in your business every day? Uh, I have a contact manager, yeah, so cool. we use that to kind of keep track of our contacts. We use a system called Radius Bob. Oh. There's probably other ones out there, but it's one that was kind of for the health insurance, and it allows my admin and I to kind of keep notes on clients and, and make sure we try to follow up. Well, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, they can contact me any way they want. Okay. So phone, whether it be office or, or cell phone. Right. I have a website as well, okay. www.rfimasters. Dot com. My office number is 512-807-9594. And my assistant, Lorraine, uh, will probably answer the phone. Brilliant. Uh, depending what time of day you call. <laughs> like I said, he is one of the most knowledgeable insurance people I know. Um, and the health insurance business over the years was decimated. And a lot of people got out of that business and raised a survivor and stayed in there and continues. If you're a small business and you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I offer insurance? This is the guy to come to and he'll be able to help you out and get you set up regardless if you're a small two-person business or if you're a thousand-person business, he'll be glad to help you. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll be back here next week and it's the beginning of 2019. It's going to be an awesome year. 